Hey everybody, um, really delighted to have the opportunity to come uh, speak to you all. I'm a little sad there's no time for Q&A, but hopefully uh, maybe after the sessions are over. Uh, so what I'm going to talk about today is big data to improve user experience. Uh, I'm particularly relevant to the off-grid solar market, which needs to go from about a million customers today to a billion. And what do I mean by, by, uh, by that? This is, I think, a NASA satellite image of uh, what the world's electricity usage looks like. And you can see that the global south has massive unmet demand uh, for electricity in general. These are not users who care about whether they'll get electricity from a renewable source. You know, is it solar? Is it nuclear? They really don't care. They just want electricity. There's about a billion people who are not connected to the grid and probably another billion people who have a grid connection that does not give them as much energy as they would like. Uh, and for at least the last, I would say, seven to eight years, the cost of solar solutions have been within the range of reasonable for this market. And yet there are less than a million households that actually have a working uh, independent, say, solar home system that they are using right now. So one of the big questions for us um, is, you know, why hasn't that industry taken off more rapidly? Why, why has it been so slow to adopt solar solutions? Um, and uh, I'm a little biased, but uh, when I think about that problem, the question I ask myself is, are we looking at the product accurately? Are we really thinking about the product as the right product? Because when we say off-grid solo, the images that come to mind are, you know, little panels on thatched roofs. Um, and we think about cables and batteries and, uh, uh, and a lot of things that are, uh, you know, complex hardware for customers who are still using candles and kerosene lanterns and maybe car batteries, right? But unfortunately, there are a lot of solar uh, businesses selling electricity to customers in this way. I'll talk about wattage and panels and ampas and whether the battery is lithium or not. And really, it's kind of um, asking a customer to take all of the technology risk on your behalf and tell them, you know, you'll give them a six-month warranty uh, and uh, uh, knowing that they won't be able to get any help if the system stops working on month seven because a rat chewed on a cable, right? It, it doesn't seem reasonable. And hence, um, you know, the industry didn't really take off. Uh, demand was suppressed, even though people really wanted electricity. This is not their vision of what uh, they wanted. Uh, so the, I think the next iteration the uh, market came up with was maybe if it looks familiar, people will adopt it faster. So they made designs that looked like kerosene lanterns, but were hooked up to a solar panel. <laughs> Needless to say, it did not quite work, right? So when I uh, started uh, looking at this market for investment opportunities, uh, what I thought about was, you know, what the product needs to be something that gets a job done, right? The customer has a job that needs to be done. I empathize with this customer because, you know, I have gone and spent, uh, you know, summers with my grandparents who didn't have electricity, and my desire for how I use electricity didn't change because I was in a village. I wanted exactly two things, right? I wanted a reliable service not hardware that I need to understand and take care of. And I wanted to be able to pay for it in weekly, monthly installments. I didn't want to make a you know, purchase of like something I want to use for five years with cash up front. That didn't make any sense. Now, these are very non-trivial problems to solve, right? Because how do you provide reliable service with a solar system when you can't just scale the system up? It will get too expensive. You can't just have more storage than required. And the level of charge is not going to be the same every day. This is not a backup system. This is the only system the customer is using. Even monthly payments is a non-trivial problem because your customer does not have a credit score. In fact, has no digital footprint of their income whatsoever. So you can't even verify that they have the money to pay for your system. 
So I'll talk about a couple of companies I invested in who are taking very, very creative um, and modern approaches to solving these problems and talk about some of the great work they are doing. Um, so first, let's talk about Bbox. Bbox has invested a lot in understanding how their customers use their system. So you, the graph you see on your left is the day in the uh, life of one household using electricity for the very first time with their solar system. And this is a really important understanding to gain because you want to know at what points the system is disappointing your user. If they're switching on the TV first thing in the morning when the sun has just risen, they're probably disappointed by how little TV viewing time they just got and the system kind of mm, shut down, right? And that's very important information for you as a service provider and you need to collect that. And on the right, you see the national average usage across three different countries over one day. And you see how different those graphs are means maybe they need to be selling different types of systems in different countries based on what the level of usage is. This is data from over a week. On the left, you see battery usage over a week in the same household. And what we really need to take away from this is there's no such thing as the average day, right? You have people using very little of the system on a Wednesday. You have them using a lot of it on a Sunday. But your static system only has the one configuration. And it kind of you know, is over-designed for a particular day and under-designed for the other. So what Bbox has done is take this and personalize the system's configuration every day so that on Wednesday they can be very stingy with how much, how much the solar system gets used. But the customers are not disappointed because they generally don't say watch TV on Wednesday that much, right? So you're kind of modulating the system and personalizing it to suit the customer's expectations and hence improving the user experience. And how do they do all this? It's a lot of really gnarly data collection. So they have remote monitoring and remote control over every system so that they can see exactly how customers are using it. And they use advanced machine learning algorithms to collect all that data, create insights from it that allow them to keep the state of health of the battery intact over long periods of time. And what that means is this red curve. As soon as this red curve starts dropping, they take actions to make sure that the state of health of the battery is above a certain point so that the customer continues to have a great user experience. And what all of this boils down to is that they can provide customers with the opportunity to just sit and watch TV on a Saturday morning using a system powered by a $20 lead acid battery, but these customers feel like they are having an on-grid experience in their own way. And the, all of the innovation behind it was using really standard off-the-shelf cheap hardware, but with innovative software behind it, powering it, changing it, and personalizing it. Same applies to SunFunder. This graph is them trying to create a credit score out of like a dozen different portfolios of customers over a four year period. So you can see it's a non-trivial challenge. How do you take this and securitize it, right? So uh, what they're doing is they're taking an iterative approach to financing, right? The first loan you get is so that you can give them data and they can put it through their, this was you know, version one, they're much more advanced system now to be able to create a reliable credit score for their customers. And now that you have some innovative solutions and multiple companies that are trying to do all this, how do you scale it fast? Both these companies are taking a platform approach to their business, which means you know, see this great visualization on the left. Bbox invested a lot of effort and resources being able to visualize their customer uh, presence um, using their solar API. And now they offer it to everyone else in the industry as well so that they, people can take advantage of the software they built over three years and uh, continue using it and improving customer experience. SunFunder similarly is a platform that allows many different financiers to come together, take different levels of risk, and collaborate together to have much quicker and larger impact than they otherwise would. So really, I think this is a great direction to go in. Uh, and what's next for me, the way I'm thinking about this industry, is desire, right? 
we are still in the place where we think we are kind of doing a favor to everyone by building clean tech products for them. And there are very few people who are thinking about it as a true product, which is that the customer needs to desire the product for its functionality, not because it's solar or not solar. And when we can take that mentality down to the off-grid uh, community, we'll be able to get to those billion people who would really like to use it. Thank you.